Welcome to the Your Next Move podcast. Today, we are talking about executive presence. This has been a topic I've wanted to create content around for a little while now because when I'm working with mid-career professionals, and by mid-career, generally I'm talking about folks who they are in a more senior level role, no longer entry level. Maybe they're managing one, two people, or they're on track to very soon, and they're looking to move into higher level true more senior level stakeholder roles, executive presence is a part of the feedback they receive, that they're lacking executive presence. But what is executive presence? How do you cultivate it? What is it comprised of? That is what we're going to talk about today. And executive presence isn't necessarily something that you may be able to clearly articulate or see. It's something that many people say that you embody. We all know it when we see it, and it's really the key to strengthening your brand as a leader in the workplace. As Sylvia Ann Hewlett says in her book, Fast Track Career, how you act, speak, and look count for a lot when you're determining your leadership presence. So even though it may seem elusive, today I'm gonna break down the three components to help you understand, and with a little bit of practice, hopefully embody this. So part one is gravitas. Now this is how you act. Gravitas is defined as dignity and seriousness that is outwardly expressed and demonstrated through action. So note here, again, when we say something's demonstrated through action, you literally have to show it. You can't speak about it. It's just how you walk into a room. The building blocks of this are confidence, integrity, emotional intelligence, reputation, decisiveness, having a vision, and these are all tested under fire. How you respond to pressure, how much resilience you can demonstrate will reflect how much gravitas you hold in any situation. And if we pivot for a second, because I think it's important to talk about resilience, there are three categories to mention here. Because when we talk about resilience, it's emotional, it's mental, and it's physical. So emotional resilience is when you're faced with the challenge, are you anxious or are you calm? Are you frustrated? Are you panicking or are you decisive? When you're positioning yourself as a leader in an organization, that means that others are coming to you for the advice, coming to you for a decision, coming to buy into your vision. When you're faced with pressure, you can't be the one who's like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. This is crazy, I'm so anxious. You have to have a bit I don't even wanna say stoicism, but you have to have a bit of finesse with how you're processing information, and that's how you're showing your emotional EQ through your resilience. Mental resilience is, are you able to continue to be rational when faced with great challenges and pressure? Are you able to take a step back and assess the situation before making an informed decision versus just quickly jumping to something that may or may not be the best move for you in that moment? And last but not least is physical resilience. So are your thoughts, our thoughts can often translate into our body language. So how are you carrying yourself? during times of distress? What is your posture like, your breathing? Do you have nervous tics in the moment? This morning when I was getting my makeup done, I was talking about how with my makeup artist, I get my makeup done when I have big engagements. So generally I'm under a lot of pressure. So I generally like to bring someone in to do my makeup who has a very calm being and presence. I can't have anyone who's too much all over the place because I'm preparing for a busy day. And but she noticed one time, she's like, you know what? One time I was doing an event. She said my leg was shaking the entire time she was doing my makeup because I was so nervous. At that time, I don't want to say that I was lacking resilience because I was still doing it, but I was showing my heart on my sleeve. And it made her nervous because I was nervous. As a leader, many times we have to decide where we are going to show those parts of ourselves. If I was walking into a big stakeholder presentation, I would not want someone to see me shaking in my boots. I need them to see me when I am calm, when I am defined, when I am ready. When I go into interview situations, I generally take a moment in the bathroom and get myself together. Even as I'm recording this podcast today, between each episode, when I change my outfits, I have a moment in my room where I'm like, okay, we are ready. And then I come back out and deliver whatever content that we're doing. So when you're thinking about resilience and you're talking about your gravitas, which is how people feel when you're walking into any situation, think about how you can prepare yourself. What do you need 
to show up best. Sometimes that can mean that if you get really bad news and someone is looking for you to give an informed decision right away, it's asking, do you mind if I take a minute and get back to you at the end of the day? Do you mind scheduling a meeting tomorrow morning where we can talk about this so you can take the night, you can collect your thoughts, collect your ideas, collect yourself before coming back in so you're showing the best version of yourself at all times. Other elements here before we move on to communication are about sharing your vision. That is a really big piece when we're talking about executive presence is what is your vision? How are you able to share an, an achievable future? And someone with gravitas has a deep belief in these things, deep belief in their vision and what it stands for. So quick ways to also practice your gravitas would be to be decisive, increase your self-awareness, share your vision, move with integrity, seek support when you need it, and demonstrate resilience when you're tested. So next, let's go to communication. This is how you speak. As James Holmes would say, the art of communication is the language of leadership. The art of communication is the language of leadership. How we communicate does so much, especially in the workplace. And honestly, in any relationship, knowing how to communicate no means that you know how to communicate with confidence and authority. You want your team to understand and respect what you are saying. It also means you're earning the trust of your audience by speaking with integrity. When you stick to your words, your team will stick to you as a leader. What's important here is that you are, when they say walk in the walk, talk in the talk, that's really what we're talking about here. Connecting with your audience so that you have their attention by being rational, you're presenting hard facts, compelling data that support your narrative, you're evoking emotion by telling stories, sharing your values, so your audience can relate with you and identify with you. One of the pieces of feedback that I give professionals in the workplace is when we're talking about communication, we can't just come from the perspective of, you know what, just give me the chance and I'll be able to execute really, really well. I promise I'll be able to do it. In the early stages of your career or when you're embarking upon anything new, it is crucial that you are able to communicate what you are able to do. When you're able to communicate what you're able to do, then you're able to build trust. Once trust is given, you're able to execute without having to explain yourself. We just had this conversation the other day with someone from my team. He is a amazing videographer currently recording this right now. And we know his work quality. Nobody asked him for anything. I just say, how much, how much do I pay you? How much? Send an invoice. There's no description on anything, but it's because he's built so much trust so much excellence, has so many receipts of what his work looks like, I don't need him to communicate it because I can see it. But that takes years of building. And many times as professionals, we don't want to take the time to build the receipts. We want to get the opportunity to get the first receipt. But what you have to do is be able to communicate what you want to do, communicate your vision, communicate your level of excellence, so then you can have the opportunity to act. So last but not least is appearance. When we're talking about executive presence, you see I got my feathers on today. If you're watching on YouTube, I love this, this blazer. Appearance, we all say, you know, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. However, at the same exact time, First impressions count. They always have, always will. And it's always harder to re-navigate a situation and try and change your first impression with subsequent interactions with someone. And when you're building in a leadership role, building your own brand as a leader, you need to walk the walk, talk the talk, and dress like it. You need to embody your brand with how you act, speak, and look. So how do you do that? And this means making sure you're dressing for the venue that you are in and the people that you're going to meet. People say that everything is in the details and you have to pay attention. Notice the unstated dress codes. Leaders know how to use dress to help build connections because we all know that appearance can help you find common ground. So example for me as a speaker, I've worked in several different work environments. I worked in higher education that was very casual. I've worked in higher education that had a corporate flair. I've also worked in corporate financial services. 
every place you go, even if we look at corporate financial services, there are so many institutions and every place has its own pizzazz, its own way of doing things. And when I'm a speaker, I think about, well, what do the people dress like who work in this organization? So what I would wear at a large Fortune 100 company in financial service would probably be different than what I'd wear if I was speaking at a tech company that may be more laid back. And you want to make sure that you are taking care of yourself in terms of appearance. And now I'm not, of course we wanna dress and look and feel our best. We have episodes this season where we talk a lot about authenticity. So if you're not someone who wears six inch heels to work, I know I don't, then I'm gonna rock some flats or I may have a really fun pair of sneakers on. So be authentic to yourself while also understanding the cultural norms. But I also want to say when we think about appearance, also think about how you're taking care of yourself. Do you have the energy to successfully take on the challenges that you are going to be up against every single day? What is it that you need to feed yourself? So that also means looking alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic sometimes. I'm not saying you gotta walk in and be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed every single day, but you also don't want people looking up to you saying like, dang, you tired. When's the last time you got a good night's rest? That's also a part of the leadership look and feel and helps people buy into the entire vision. Remember, in the workplace, you are always on a stage. People are always watching, trying to see how you dress, how you act, how you're taking in different situations. What is your resilience like? So be aware of your body language. Be aware of the brand that you're presenting. Is the brand that you are presenting out to the world congruent with who and where you are? And most importantly, where you wanna be. When I talk about making moves in the workplace, I always teach people what is the gap between where you are and where you are not. So if you want to be over here, what is the difference? Are you showing up as someone who wants to be here? Or are you showing up as where you are? Keep that in mind as you're thinking about your executive presence. So remember, the intention behind all three components is to ultimately connect with the people you are leading. Remember that you're practicing and you have to hone in on your gravitas, your communication, and your appearance. This is not something that you are going to get overnight. Honestly, it's something I still work on all the time. When I think about my own gravitas, how I'm connecting with people, how I'm perceived, is it the brand that I'd like to build? You'll see I experiment with dress all the time. Every season of this podcast, I'm experimenting with my appearance to see what feels good. Am I connecting with my audience in a certain way? Do things like that matter? Is how I communicate and teach you. How is that working? Is it working? No? Then we need to change it and shift how I connect and how I communicate whatever it is that I'm working on. Executive presence is not something you're born with, but something that you cultivate. You must continually develop it in order to fully step into your leadership role in the workplace. So with that, thank you so much for listening to this episode on executive presence. I know it's something that I probably should have done in season two of the podcast, but we're here now. If you have more questions, please let me know. May your next move be your very best move in the workplace. <music>